Verse 3. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. The message of the gospel, it prunes you, it purifies you, it confronts sin in your life, commands cleansing or rejection. If you don't want to submit to the cleansing of God's word and receive the life of the spirit through the word of the Lord, then you have no part in the Lord. If you're going to follow the Lord, you have to be willing to take pruning. You have to be willing to take correction from the Lord. For the Bible says it is stupid to hate correction because you're damning your own life by not taking the correction of God's word or God's servants who hear from him and deliver a message to you about how you should implement changes into your life to be more obedient to the Lord. If you don't take that correction, the Bible says you're a fool and it says it's stupid to hate correction. Verse 4, Jesus says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Another translation would say, Abide in me, and I will abide in you. James says, Draw near to God, God will draw near to you. So he's telling you to take the steps. And if Jesus brings you into union with himself, The Bible says he who's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. If Jesus joins you to himself, it is your job to remain in him. And people will say, well, Sam, how do I remain in Jesus? I'm glad you asked. John chapter 8 verse 31 actually tells us. It says, if you abide in my word, you're truly my disciples. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. uh, The NLT says, if you remain faithful to my teachings... So receiving the instruction from the word of the Lord, being faithful to the teachings of the Lord is what makes you a faithful person and causes you to abide in him. If you want to know what it means to abide in Jesus, it's to continue on in his teachings and be obedient to them. You don't disobey the word of the Lord if you want to be a disciple. 